Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about how every day, metaphorically, we are reborn. Every morning we wake up, we have a fresh start at life a chance to have a fresh outlook, create new experiences, and leave the worries of yesterday behind. It's a new day, and we have within us the control to make a conscious choice to make the powerful decision to make today great. A new day where we can cultivate new empowering habits and let go of old beliefs holding us back. No matter how bad yesterday was, the dawn of a new day creates a fresh slate to start over. The best way to start each day is to choose to make that day great, to do things better and wiser from the lessons we learned yesterday. So how will you use your time each day to make the most of it? One of my favorite sayings that I learned from Bollywood actor Anupam Kher was the phrase, my best day is today. By saying this statement every morning, we feel the thrill of unlimited possibilities and the joy of knowing we have much to look forward to each and every day. As Catherine Pulsifer quotes, every day is a chance to begin again. Don't focus on the failures of yesterday. Start today with positive thoughts and expectations. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I mean, speaking about a $75 million house, what's been the most expensive house that you've sold ever? Okay. On the show, we're- Nine million, nine million. But mm. um, the thing is, you know, it's very difficult to even find clients that have $75 million houses. Yeah. So people forget that, you know, they it's so easy to judge and put down, but it's like, do you even know anyone that A, has that house and B, would give it to you as a listing? Unlikely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's very true. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Davina Portrats from the hit TV show, Selling Sunset on Netflix. Davina, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you so much. How are you? I am doing wonderful. It's a beautiful day. I'm so happy and excited to talk to you. We had some technical difficulties, but we made it work, so I'm I'm excited, yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but you know, I love you on Selling Sunset. And you know, before we talk about the show, let's talk about, you know, your love for real estate. Cause I know you started having a love for real estate at a young age. Yeah, actually, um, I got my license in January 2006 and when I went to Pepperdine I was an advertising student and so one of my classes required us to, you know, it was like a graphic design class mm -hmm. and it required us to uh, make magazine covers mm -hmm. and how we would kind of put them together and so I was like I'm going to do houses and interiors and things like that because yeah. there's amazing houses in Malibu, right? Yes. So I would drive around the area and look at incredible houses there and then I would just knock on the people's doors and be like hey I'm a student at Pepperdine you know, here's my ID I'm not some oh, wow. crazy person <laughs> and I'm taking oh yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very like uh, I don't know if it's courageous, but like I, I'm, I don't mind being like asking. Does that mean people yeah. are saying if you don't ask, you'll never get anywhere? Hundred percent. So, so a lot of people actually were totally fine with it. The only times that I didn't get access was if someone was at home and it was like a housekeeper, and they were like, "Well, I'm, that's not my decision," you know, mm -hmm. or they just weren't home. Uh, but a lot of times they would let me in, and I made these awesome. Uh, like I, I still have some of them. I think these magazine covers with these incredible like furnishings and views and houses and stuff. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. And all the houses were so different. So um, that's kind of where I discovered that. And it was technically door knocking, right? Like wow, I could yeah. have been selling real estate, right? So, but I was I was doing graphic design for my advertising class, and that's how I got into it. That's amazing. You know what? Yeah, sometimes you just have to be bold, knock on doors, ask people for what you want. Because as you said, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? So I, I think that's great. And I think that's been part of your success as well. Let's talk about the Oppenheim Group and how you started. When did you start? Uh, at the Oppenheim Group, I started, I can't remember exactly, 2018, I think. Yeah. Um, but I've known Brett and Jason since I want to say 2015. Oh wow! So I actually met Brett on a transaction. 
Oh. He was representing a uh, buyer and I was representing the seller and we had a few issues to work out. So we became really close during the escrow process. And then, um, you know, we became friends. Yeah. So he asked me to come out with them and, you know, socialize and kind of get to know Jason a little bit. And I met Mary and I think I met Amanda. Let me see who else I met. Yeah, a couple other people that are not on the show. And so I kind of got to know the group a little bit that way. And I think we went to some Christmas party together, things like that, um, like party hopping in the hills. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And were you surprised when you found out that, you know, basically your career and your job was going to be a reality show, which is incredible. <laughs> Uh, I, I, it wasn't planned, like I didn't know this was going to happen, but I found out about it last minute and I was a last minute add-on to the show. Mm -hmm. So I um, I was excited about it and I didn't, but I also didn't, to be fair, I had no concept of the format of the show, if that makes sense. Like I didn't understand what the show was focusing on, how it would be structured, um, kind of what the focus of it would be. I really truly thought it was purely real estate, more similar to million dollar listing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really understand that it was much more about the interpersonal dynamics and the fashion and LA, yeah. which is great. I just didn't know. So, um, I, you know, it was a learning curve and um, I was the last minute add on and I knew some of the girls, but not very well, more in a real estate, a little bit of a social setting, but yeah, so that's kind of how I got involved. Yeah, and I always felt like with reality shows, are you guys conscious of the camera? Because you guys are so natural just talking and it's it's your daily life, but it, are you conscious of the cameras or is it just something that you ignore and you just are yourself? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. And there are two kind of ways to look at it. So of course, initially all of us were like, oh my God, there's cameras yeah. everywhere. And you kind of are a little bit awkward. Yeah. Um, but keep in mind, they film so much footage, thousands and thousands of hours. So they don't yeah. use everything, right? Yeah. So of course they have to cut the show to fit into a 45 minute format, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they can't use everything. So they have so much more footage than you see just because of the format of the show. So if there is an awkward moment of somebody being aware of the camera, they, you know, you might not see it, right? Yeah. But then also, um, after a while, you definitely get used to it. And I know that sounds yeah. weird, but yeah. um, they're also very inconspicuous. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, we could be at a party. I remember recently we were at a party and um, there were so many people there and so many things and you're natural in conversation with other people or eating or dancing or whatever you might be doing. And all of a sudden the cameras kind of are in the background, but they're not like directly pointing at you. They can yeah. be you know, around. So they're a little bit morphing into the background, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't notice them as much, right? Cause there's also other things. There's other people, there's furniture whatever, you know, so then it doesn't, uh, it's not as obvious. It's not like yeah. a white wall with a camera face. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That, that's better. Cause I feel like it's nerve wracking already to go to red carpets and events and then let alone when there's cameras following you. But yeah, if, if it's like, you know, it's, it's not that obvious, then it, it totally makes sense that you guys are, you know, just living and how you in do your it, life. You do get used to it. I mean, you're, you're fully aware of, of the cameras being on you, but if you're having a natural conversation where you're yeah. in the flow of what you're saying, yeah. then, um, you know, you're, you can only focus on one thing truly, right? So then you're yeah. like, you and I are talking right now and it's like, we know we're being recorded, but I'm talking to you. So yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, true. So mm -hmm. you can kind of like, it becomes more of a background and, um, you're also mic'd at all times, so mm. you know that you know you could be going to the bathroom and you're being mic'd. So it's, oh, like, wow. <laughs> it's a little weird, yeah. I did read that before you got into real estate, you were a Ford model. So what did that whole experience teach you? Because you know what, being a model takes a lot of hard work and discipline. Uh, modeling is very different than acting, but it, it did teach me a lot of to be really open-minded and. Um, you know, because I've tried so many different looks and hair and makeup and outfits that I would, would have never personally picked, but I, you know, was that was my job to wear them and to make it look good. And it gave me a lot of confidence and try things that I would not normally try. And so also, um, also taught me a lot, you know, about self-confidence and not taking things personal necessarily because mm -hmm. 
and modeling, you are technically the product, right? Yeah. So your hair color, your height, your look, your, whatever your look is, um, that that's technically what's what you're selling for, you know, an ad or whatever it might be. So if someone prefer, prefers a blonde or someone that looks different than you, you can't really take it personal. It's just kind of what it is. And at there are moments where you do take it personal, but after going through that and it's like, hey, you can't change what you look like or if someone prefers someone else or they prefer you. So uh, it does teach you a lot about perspective and self-confidence. Someone does wonderful. If they don't, that's okay too. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't make you any less valuable. So you learn a little bit about that. And also you get really good at seeing what you look like in photos. So you know which <laughs> work and don't. And they really think that that helps a lot um, if you've seen many many photos of you and you're like oh that position worked or that day I was having a bad day and you can see it in my eyes or my face so you get a lot of feedback on what you look like and things that work so I think that that helps a lot too yeah, absolutely. I did pageants and I, I can definitely relate to that, you know, you become confident. Even, you know, the experience makes you confident and kind of just makes you own who you are because you have no exactly. choice but to be confident, right? Exactly. <laughs> you, you exactly. have no choice. Like, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Like, I can change what I look like and I love it. And this, and either, it, you know, you love it too and this works for you or not. And that's okay either way, right? So mm -hmm. you just kind of like, don't take things as personal, I think, and you become confident. Like, yeah, I'm, you know, special. Everyone is special in their own way because no one is you, right? Yeah, yeah. And so either that works or not. And if not, keep it going, right? Yeah, absolutely. Confidence is key. And speaking of taking things personal, you know, I did notice on this show that Jason really did push you. Like he was, you know, he saw so much potential in you and he was really pushing you to be the best that you can be. Um, so l let's talk about that experience. And um, what were some challenges that you faced in real estate as well? Um, I'm, I'm very competitive and I am very motivated and driven. So mm -hmm. for me, it's not that I don't believe in my ability or anything like that, but my, um, you know, my way of motivating myself and other people is through positive reinforcement. And I think a lot of men tend to criticize and that's their way of motivating you, but yeah. that doesn't work. I feel like negative reinforcement is, is essentially like, putting you down and I and it depends how you do it but you know I'm not opposed to criticism but I, I do think it's important to also give credit to someone like even if something yeah. doesn't work you can be like hey I'm really proud of you for trying you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like you have to kind of keep them interested in going and you know if someone is whatever they're trying to lose weight and they choose to have a carrot instead of a cookie they're not going to see the results right away but you got to be like hey good job you know yeah. like I think that's really important and um, I also think that being an entrepreneur, which of course Jason is, and essentially all of us are, right? Yeah. You have to take chances and risks. And if you're not willing to do that, well, like you're, you're gonna fail at some of these things. You will, that's part of the deal. But if you're not willing to take a chance, you're never gonna know. Just like knocking on the door mm -hmm. of these houses, if people might've said no, right? Like, yeah. Absolutely, that, that doesn't, I don't know get out of here or whatever and that's fine that's their choice but if you don't ask you're not gonna get anywhere so like if you're not willing to lose like risk and lose then you're never gonna get ahead so to me mm -hmm. it's kind of like yeah it's a risk and it might not work but I have to try and to not like get support or appreciation for that that to me is like I don't agree with that and and you know uh, I think I was very aware of some of the risks that I was taking, but I still thought it was worth the chance, so. Yeah, I think you handled yourself really well in that situation. And you know what, that's part of being an entrepreneur, right? Is, is getting feedback and pushing forward regardless. And like, of course you might fail. And and if you don't fail, there's a problem, right? Like, I mean, you're how are you not failing at anything? That doesn't work, I mean, but what was the risk to me with the $75 million house, if that's what you're referring to? Yeah. like. You know, there was no risk at losing marketing money. So there, yeah. what were we really gonna lose other than a chance, like just a little bit of effort trying, you know? So, and there wasn't like months and months or years of time invested either. So mm -hmm. I don't think it was that crazy. And I think, um, 
he was, you know, also trying to kind of make it a little more juicy, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, speaking about a $75 million house, what's been the most expensive house that you've sold ever okay, on the show? It was $9 million, $9 million. But mm -hmm. um, the thing is, you know, it's very difficult to even find clients that have $75 million houses. Yeah. So people forget that, you know, they it's so easy to judge and put down, but it's like, do you even know anyone that A, has that house and B, would give it to you as a listing? Unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very true. Um, you know, our show is all about inspiration and uplifting our yeah. viewers and showcasing successful people. So I want to ask you, you know, what advice do you have for someone in this industry that watches Selling Sunset or watches all of you and, you know, looks up to you guys and, um, you know, maybe is not seeing that success in their own lives. Maybe they're in real estate, maybe they're a singer, um, they could be doing anything. But like, what would you say to encourage them? they're not seeing those results, then maybe they're not getting the support that they they need. Well, I think surrounding yourself with the right people, such as mentors that are, you know, doing better than you or that are doing exactly what you want to emulate, you know, so it's very um, important to have good advisors, good mentors, good um, role models around you, whether it's someone that is very supportive and gives positive reinforcement or someone that is, um, modeling what you're trying to accomplish. You know, if, if you want to be a successful real estate agent, I would highly recommend being an assistant or some sort of intern, something like that with someone like that. So you can learn how those successful people use their time, yeah. what they do in their time, how they divide it up. You know, do they spend millions of dollars on marketing or do they go door knocking or do they use their network? Do they send e-blasts? How much time do they spend calling people? So you can understand and learn what works, what doesn't work. And you're going to have to go on your own journey, but at least you have an idea of what to do, you know, and read books, listen to podcasts. Um, you know, there's so much real estate data and information and courses out there that can give you a lot of guidance and I think also focusing like you know pick three things that you're focusing maybe you listen to a real estate podcast maybe you listen to a motivational inspirational speaker and maybe you have a mentor that you follow because you can't do a hundred things right so you got to mm -hmm. kind of focus on two or three things and do that and I think you have to really make sure that you truly have a passion for real estate yeah. or anything else that you do. If you don't absolutely love it and you're not obsessed with it, mm -hmm. don't even bother because there is another person out there that loves it much more than you and mm -hmm. they're all in. Like I will tell you right now, Jason lives and breathes real, real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Like the guy reads every magazine, every you know news thing, and he'll come to me because, hey, I read Inman Direct and so-and-so sold um, stocks and um, you know, what do you think, how do you think that's gonna affect the brokerages and, and you know, the IPO of you know, Compass or whatever. And so you have to be at that level of interest and passion in the subject that you're choosing. So hopefully if it's real estate, a lot of people see our show and they think it's all glamorous. It's, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of hard work behind it. And real estate's really tough, very mm -hmm. competitive. There are, you know, lots of times where you don't make money. Mm -hmm. So you have to be comfortable with that. And um, a lot of people give up after six months or a year because mm -hmm. it is that difficult. So I think you have to make sure you really love it and, and then go all in. You have to be like all in. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that too and you addressed that. You know, it's not all glitz and glam. People see the show, no. they just see, you know, beautiful women, nice cars and, and, you know, they think that's the life. But obviously there's a lot of hard work that goes behind the scenes and I like that you touch base on that. And of course, as you said, is is key because if you're not passionate about something, you're, you're not going to do well to be honest most of the, let, the most me, successful people put, put the perspective like imagine you own a house for five million dollars that you you know you're in your industry that you've worked hard to find you know afford and let's say you want to sell it because you want to move to another part of town or something okay and you could list it with any agent out there and there's so many options right who are you going to list it with? The person that's obsessed about real estate knows every detail and that is like oozing real estate and can recite every detail and you know is dedicated to the you know business mm -hmm. or someone that's part time that barely knows anything that kind of likes it but doesn't really love the hard part or doesn't want to deal with inspections or you know mm -hmm. doesn't want to mm -hmm. overcome challenges and maybe you know problems with it. Who do you feel comfortable listing your house with? And that's yeah. what you're up against. 
right? Yeah, absolutely. And I just actually bought a house recently and it was my first property. And um, the real estate agent I was working with was really passionate and she kind of took away the troubles, you know, if, when you buy your first house away. So I can yeah. completely relate to that. Yeah, passion is definitely oh, key. <laughs> right? Yeah, I and see. you know, like someone that's like part time, that's also like their real passion might be fitness or, you know, nothing <laughs> against that. But then you're like, well, I don't know if I want to use this guy because he doesn't really, does he know everything? I don't know, right? Absolutely. It Absolutely. just depends. And, um, and I think, you know, someone new is not necessarily a problem if, if you feel like they're really um, dedicated. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And you know, you're very successful and it's not just on the show. You've already had a successful uh, career before that. So what do you think the key to your success has been that separated you? Because you know what, there are a lot of realtors out there um, and they're not successful, but yeah. So what yeah. do you think are three traits that has made you successful? Um, I think I have incredible, I know I have incredible willpower no matter yeah. what like, I, of course i have emotions too and i get you know i get down sometimes too but i have this incredible drive and willpower like no matter what i will not give up i might get you know upset one day or bothered by something but i just keep going and so you got to keep you know dust yourself off and keep going if something goes wrong and that happens to every single person so are you going to give up or are you going to push through and so Whatever it might have been, I would just keep going. I think the persistence is really important. Mm -hmm. um, also, I feel like, yeah, surrounding yourself by the right people that can help you refer you to clients, a job, you know, introduce you to the next client, something like that. So mm -hmm. surrounding yourself with the right people. And I feel like, yeah, this, I guess the mindset is part of it too, which is mm -hmm. part of the kind of drive, right? Like you really have to, do some real soul searching to see like, do you really want to do this? And do you really believe in yourself and just having confidence? And sometimes you don't know something, but you're like, yeah, I'm going to go learn about this. Like I didn't know about 1031 exchange, like every detail because I had never done it. And then I had a client that had that. And then I, you know, called someone and I learned everything about it. And I was like, okay, I know 1031 exchange now. So if you don't know something just be like i'm gonna learn about it and be dedicated to it so i think it's i think it's a confidence dedication perseverance you mm -hmm. know surrounding yourself with the right people and um having a vision like visualize for yourself you know just because something is not materializing right now you can make that happen if you truly are like it's happening or like have certainty about your vision mm -hmm. And yeah. I think then you attract the right circumstances to create that outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like the law of attraction. <laughs> you know, if you, if you manifest it and you want it bad enough and you keep doing the work, it will happen. But thank well, you. I, yeah, I don't know if like wanting it because then you're going to keep wanting more. So you have to know That's it's true. happening. You That's know what true. I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to, yeah, you can't be attach, attached to the outcome of it, right? You just have yeah. to do yeah. the work and, and let it manifest naturally. <laughs> but thank you, Davina, so much for being on the show today. It's been such a pleasure. Congratulations you. on all your success. You. You're very authentic. And yeah, it's, it's really been really nice talking to you. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us like the YouTube and Facebook.